Hello people, today we are going to learn about long-term liabilities. So let's see. A relatively small debt needs to be, needs can be filled from the single source, which is bank. We can take loan from the bank or insurance companies, like we can buy insurance from insurance companies and pension plans. Large debt needs are often filled by issuing bonds. So companies issue bond to fill the needs of large debt. Installment notes payable. Long term notes that call for a series of installment payments. Uh, each payment covers interest for a period and a portion of the principal. And with each payment the interest portion gets smaller and the principal portion gets larger. Allocating installment payment between interest and principal. So this is the mathematical calculation uh, for calculating the interest expense and, and principal balance. So let's see. Identify the unpaid prin principal balance. Unpaid principal balance multiplied by interest rate gives you interest expense for that period. Installment payment minus interest expense gives you reduction in unpaid balance, principal balance. And then you use this data to compute new unpaid principal balance. So let's see an example to understand more uh, how we can allocate installment payment interest and principal. So this is an example. Let's read the problem. On January 1, 2003, XYZ borrowed $7,581.57 from ABC of River City. The loan was 5-year loan and had an interest rate of 10%. The annual payment is $2,000. Prepare an amortization table for XYZ loan. So here, the uh, every year we are paying annual payment of $2,000. An interest rate is given as 10% of the principal um, uh, total borrowed amount. So borrowed amount is 7581 and it is taken on January 1, 2003. So on January 1, we have unpaid balance of $7,581.57 which we have borrowed. At the end of the January 2000, at the end of the year, which is December 31st, 2003, we need to pay a dollar value of $2,000, which is written here, annual payment of $2,000. So we have to pay $2,000. Then to calculate the interest expense, uh, this $2,000 includes interest expense plus uh, unpaid, uh, the value uh, of um, the principal amount which we are paying. So how we can calculate that? For calculating in interest expense, we ha just have to multiply the interest rate with the unpaid balance. How much is the unpaid balance? 7581 and the interest rate is 10%. So unpaid balance multiplied by interest rate of 10%. So let's do a calculation here in a, an Excel sheet. Unpaid balance of 7,851.57 multiplied by interest rate of 10%, which is 0 0.10, gives you 785.157, which is 758.16. This is the interest expense. How we can calculate the reduction in unpaid balance? Out of $2,000, we have interest expense of 758.16. So if we deduct this interest expense, we will get the value of reduction in unpaid balance. So let's see. $2,000 minus this interest expense will give you the value. The value is $14.84, which is reduction in unpaid balance so now the new unpaid balance will be the two the original value of the unpaid balance which was seven thousand five hundred eighty one point five seven minus the 
reduction in unpaid balance will give you Give an error, let's see. Minus one two one four point eight four. I don't know why it's giving error, let's calculate again. Is equal to seven five eight one point five seven minus one two one four point eight four. It gives six mm, Six three uh, that is seven five eight one point five seven one two one one two four one okay so it gives the value six three three nine point seven three as the unpaid ba new unpaid balance similarly at the end of two thousand four we have again we again have to pay two thousand dollars. So for calculating interest expense, we have to multiply the interest rate with the new unpaid balance of the last year. So new unpaid balance is 6339.73. If you multiply with the interest rate of 10%, you will get 6339.97. So reduction in unpaid balance will be payment minus the interest expense will give you 1336.03. Uh, and similarly we can calculate the unpaid balance by deducting 6339 the previous unpaid balance minus the reduction in unpaid balance of this year which will give you this similarly we'll do for 2005 6 and 7 and ultimately we'll get the zero value so let's see how we can prepare the journal entry for this one the for the first first year First year uh, at the end of December 31st 2003 the journal entry will be interest expense of 758.16 which is a debit value and we have a notes payable of 1241 dollars and 84 cents on the debit side and since we are paying with the cash so 2000 dollars of cash as a credit. Bonds payable. What are bonds? Payable? Bonds usually involve the borrowing of a large sum of money called principal. The principal is usually paid back as a as a lump sum at the end of bond period. Individual bonds are often denominated with a par value or face value of one thousand dollars. Bonds payable. Bonds usually carry a stated rate of interest also called a contract rate interest is normally paid semi annually remember this interest is computed as interest is equal to principal multiplied by stated rate multiplied by time bonds are issued through an intermediary called an underwriter bonds can be sold on on organized security exchanges bond prices are usually quoted as percentage of face um, uh, face amount so, for example, a face value of uh, a bond price $100,000 will be stated, uh, quoted as 102, bond at 102, and the would sell for rupees 1020. So, how we calculate the, let's see here. It says uh, bond at 102. If somebody says bond at 102, uh, then it is the um, that means it is 102 percent of the face value of 1020. So face value is 1000 dollars, and it is it is saying bond at 102. That means 102 percent. 102 percent is 1.02 1. Point second zero two is equal to one point zero two, which will give you one zero two zero. So the so the bond will sell for rupees one zero two zero. Remember this that bond bond is always quoted as a percentage of face amount. 
So it's 102 is 102% of face amount, which is 1000. Types of bond, mortgage bonds, convertible bonds, debenture bonds, and junk bonds. Accounting for bonds payable. Let's see an example. On January 1, 2003, XYZ issues 1, uh, $1, 1,500,000 uh, of 12% 10-year bonds payable. Interest is payable semi-annually each on July 1 and January 1. Assume the bonds are issued at face value. Record the issuance of the bond. So when bond is issued, cash as a, uh, debit is the amount of the uh, the value of the bond and the bonds payable uh, credit is written like this because we receive we, we receive a cash uh, whenever a company issues a bond they will receive the cash so it will be entered on the debit side on the asset account and since uh, we have bond payable liability so we will uh, enter the on, under the liability account bonds payable with the credit side of the same amount. Uh, then on July 1 it will pay the interest. So how much interest it will pay? And since it is calculated semi-annually, so 12% divided by 2 which will make it semi-annually which will become 6%. 6 percent of this dollar amount will give you uh, ninety thousand dollars so interest expense will be ninety thousand which is on the debit side and cash which will be given out to the bondholder will be ninety thousand bonds sold between interest dates. bonds are often sold between interest dates the selling price of the bond is computed as present value of the bond plus accrued interest since the last interest payment is equal to selling price of the bond. So this is the formula for calculating the selling price of bond when they are sold between the interest rates. The present value concept and the bond prices. The selling price of the bond is determined by the market based on time value of money. So in case interest stated in rate is equal to market rate, bond price will be equal to par value of the bond and there is no difference to account for. Here when the stated rate is less than the market rate, then bond price will be less than the par value of the bond and the difference is accounted as a bond discount. In case of bond discount, bond price is less than the par value of the bond. And in case of bond premium, stated rate is greater than market rate. Bond price is greater than par value of the bond. And the difference is accounted as bond premium. Pension. Actuaries make the pension expense computation based on average age, retirement is, life expect expectancy, employee turnover rate, compensation level, expected rate of return for the funds. The accountant then posts the entry to record pension expense and expansion liability. What are deferred income taxes? Let's see. Deferred income taxes are the difference between tax expense and tax payable and is recorded in an account called deferred taxes. GAAP is the set of rules for preparing financial statements. So re this results in financial statement income tax expense. The internal revenue service uh, where we pay taxes which results in IRS income tax payable. So let's see an example to understand more about the deferred income taxes. Examine the December 31st 2003 information of X. The revenue is 1 million. Depreciation expense is straight line depreciation has 200,000, accelerated has 320,000, and other expense is 650,000. X of uses uh, straight line depreciation for financial reporting and accelerated depreciation for income tax reporting. Tax rate is 30%. So let's see how we can calculate the income statement. In case of income statement, it says that it uses straight line depreciation for the income statement.
financial reporting so finance in case of financial reporting you have to prepare income statement for it uses uh, straight line depreciation which is given as $200,000 and then other expenses is $50,000 so income before taxes is $150,000 and tax rate is given 30% so 30% of $150,000 is $45,000 if you multiply 30% to 150,000 you will get $45,000 so this is for the a financial reporting income statement now let's see how we can calculate tax return in case of tax return it says the problem statement says that they are using the accelerated depreciation so accelerated depreciation is given three twenty thousand dollars and other expense six fifty thousand so out of the revenue we will deduct these and we'll get in income before taxes at thirty thousand so out of this thirty thousand the tax rate is thirty percent so how much tax will be there a tax payable will be nine thousand dollars so on tax return we have to do this calculation and we get the tax payable as nine thousand dollars now the uh, income statement says that income tax expense is forty five thousand dollars and tax return says that nine nine thousand dollar is the tax payable so if we deduct the income tax expense of forty five thousand uh, dollars um, and we deduct nine thousand income tax payable of nine thousand from income tax expense of forty five thousand we'll get thirty six thousand dollars which is the deferred income taxes for the period what is financial leverage borrowing at one rate and investing at higher rate so financial leverage is also a long term liability in which if we borrow at a less interest rate and invest it at higher interest rate for example if we borrow 1 million dollar at 8% interest and invest it at 10% we will have a 20,000 of profit so guys I hope you got some idea on long term liability and the mathematical calculations uh, so subscribe to my channel for more video on financial accounting and other topics Thanks for watching.